Hello again, this is a chapter 6 video which looks at an internal consideration of the Zool BAD project and with a specific consideration of the game class. This video assumes that you've got a very good knowledge of the external workings of Zool BAD and a good knowledge of the internal workings of the other four classes which are available in, in this project. You need to have a good understanding of that before you can understand what happens in the game class. So to remind ourselves of the structure of the program, the game class itself doesn't actually work with the command words class, but it does work with the parser, command and room class. So let's have a look at that in the sequence diagram. We can see there that the first job that it does is sets up some rooms, and the next job it does is set up parser, and the next job it does is then go into the play method, and all of the work is effectively done in the play method. During the play method, uh, first thing that happens is the print welcome method gets called, but then the sort of the magic of this particular application happens at this while loop here. So while not equal to finished, uh, or while not finished, then it goes through, gets a command from the user, does some work with that command to make sure it's correct, well, as long as that command is correct and everything's hunky dory, the command gets processed and then the room, uh, the go room method gets called and it goes to that particular room. Once the go room method is finished, then it effectively goes back to the start again and then looks for some input from the user to tell them to go somewhere. So that is the basic structure of our application. So let's have a look at the game class itself. So here is our game class and we've got two fields which have been declared, the parser and the room. So we've got our current room for um, the current room and then the parser to get information from the user. The create rooms method, if we look in the constructor, is the first thing that gets called. So if you have a look in the constructor in, or in the create rooms method, we'll see that the first thing we encounter is a multiple definition of variables on one line. So this is just a shortcut way of writing how we would write that previously. So otherwise we'd write room outside, semicolon, room theater, semicolon, etc. That's just a shortcut way of writing that. We then create our rooms. If you remember with our rooms, we take a single parameter for the description when we create our room. So there's five calls there to create our five different rooms. The next thing we do is we need to set the exits. Remember, in order to set the exits, we need to have the room objects already created, so that's why we already create those. We then set those exits accordingly. So in order to make sure that those rooms connect to each other, then that's what happens in those particular ones there. Again, we've got those null, uh, null entrances, which are effectively um, the way of not uh, having an exit to a room. Once we've done that, then we set the current room to outside. So we've started the game outside. Again, you could change that if you wanted to, to start, start the game or wherever else you want to start. So that sets it up with the create rooms and sets up where you need to be. The next thing it does in the constructor is to create the new parser object. So once that's done, nothing else happens until the user does something. And in this case, the user has only got one option, and that's the public play method. So you'll notice the rest of the methods are all in private. Uh, this is the only thing, the only option they've got. First thing that happens is the print welcome method gets called. The print welcome method, the first thing it does, which is the systems are out, is all fairly straightforward. The second bit it does is it has a look then at the exits to see what exits are available. So first of all, it looks at the current room dot north exit. Now, if you remember in the room class, the room class has all of its fields are public, so we can look at those fields and we can and we can adjust them accordingly. So back in our game class, this bit here then sets up the exits. So if the current room.north exit is not equal to null, then system.out.print north. So that gives the person the op option of typing north if they want to get out of the room. Okay, and that's the same for all of those exits there. Tests the actual room looks at the room object itself and looks at the field and sees whether it's available or null um, or not. The next thing it does is just do a system to add up print line. So once the print welcome has come to an end, then we start our while loop. Now this while loop is effectively the whole structure of the program and there's a number of methods that get called from within this while loop. It sets, sets up our boolean finished first of all, so first of all it wants to make sure that that finished Boolean stays true for the program to keep running. The first thing it's going to do then is it's going to create a new command, uh, called command. 
and it's going to create that command by getting the input from the user. Now if you remember the parser class, it's got a single method which is the get command and that get command will return a type command. So what it will do is it will go through and get that command from the user. The next thing it does then is it does quite a lot in this particular line here. So what it does is it looks to say uh, call the process command method and if we look at the process command we're going to see that that returns a boolean type whether that's going to be true or false for which is going to make which is going to make the finished variable either equal true or false so let's have a look at the process command method the process command method will then take a type command which we've just given to it from the user so we've already got this from the user um, and we then set up a variable want to quit equals false. First of all, we then check the command to see if it's unknown or not. Um, and if it's unknown, give it that information. We don't know what, what it means and then return false. At that point there, we return false to the method, uh, to the previous um, while loop. If that, if that is okay though, we're gonna carry on going on and we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna create a string command word. Um, we're going to use that to get the actual command word itself. Now if that command word equals help, go or quit, then that's where we can do a certain thing. If it's help, then we'll just do the print help method, um, which you can look at below is just um, uh, a little help method there with some strings printed out. Um, otherwise, it's going to call the, if it's go, then it, this is where this gets um, interesting at this point. So if the command word equals go, then we're going to go room, um, call that method go room using the command which was given to us. So this is where if the go is okay, um, uh, so we then, once we've done that, we then use the command as the object, as the parameter again, which we get from the previous method. We then start to look at the second command. If we don't, if there is no second command, then the print out statement becomes go where. If there is, uh, then we'll move on then to the next part here, which is going to be looking at the direction. We then get the direction string by using a command dot get word. We then set up our next room, which is effectively going to be null at this point, so we've got a room to work with. Using the um, direction, so if the direction there, which we've got the string equals north, then what we'll do, so for example, if we are, if, if it is north, it has been put down, we've uh, we've got our second word, we say if the direction equals north, then next room equals current room dot north exit. Now if you remember, the current room um, object is a, is a room object and it's got four fields, uh, north exit, east exit, south, e south exit and west exit. We then say that next exit will, or next room will equal whichever room that happens to be. Um, so for example, it's the north exit, then that's what that's, that's gonna be. Uh, if that's all good, if that's, if that's fine and that's good, we'll progress on. If we do, if we do find the, the final if statement there is if the next room is null. So if there's no door there and the room hasn't been um, uh, defined on that particular um, exit, then, then that's just gonna say there is no door. Uh, we've then got an else uh, statement, so um, what will happen then is if we can't do that um, then we will say current room equals next room um, uh, and then we will then go through and then get the description of the current room and then print out the exits again. So that will effectively do the bit where we will move into that room. Once we've done that then we do a system.out.print line. And that's it. That means we've done our move, um, our room to the move, and we will finish there. That will then, uh, that's a, a void method. Uh, so we've just come from the process command. Um, once that's occurred, um, then we will return. So we've gone, we've just done this bit here. Um, if there's nothing else to complete there, then we will return on to quit, which is boolean, which is still false at this point here. So we go in and we've that becomes false, finished is still false, and then we start the while loop over again. That will then just continually working away until someone types in the by method or the, the, the by word. So if someone does type in, or rather, rather if someone types in quit, 
then we return wants to quit equals quit command. So let's have a look at the quit method. This returns a boolean method. Uh, this is where we, um, uh, if it doesn't have a second word, um, uh, or if, if it does have a second word, then we're checking to see what that word is, just to make sure the, the user hasn't put anything else. Otherwise, if he just has put quit, then that is literally the quit there, then it will return um, true as the object. So then, at this point here, the quit becomes true, or want to quit becomes true, um, and then we can return want to quit, which in this point is true. We go back to the Boolean line here, finish then becomes true, and then that means it's the end of the while loop. Um, that's the end of that then. Once that happens then, we do a system out of print line, thank you for playing, and that is the end of the application. Uh, any questions on that? And we're going to go through that in the lesson, but otherwise uh, we were going to look at how we can now improve that class and how we can make it function a little better and a little clearer in terms of the code. See you in the lesson.